Hello, I'm Yusai Khan. Welcome to One World. Today we are going to visit Egypt. In 1956, when China was still a very young republic, Egypt was the first Arab country to recognize China. It was also the first African country to do so. This year marks the 30th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two countries. We would like to dedicate this program to the two oldest civilizations in the world. We are going on a journey into a magical land, the place Egypt, land of the pharaohs, the time, past and present. It was here in Egypt that one of the world's first civilizations began 5,000 years ago. China and Egypt may be similar in this regard, but they are also very different, as we shall see. Surrounded by both desert and two seas, Egypt's physical isolation is one reason Egyptian culture is so different from any other Middle Eastern culture. It's large, bigger than Texas, with most of its 45 million people living along the banks of the Nile. Why? Because aside from the drizzles of the northern coast, no rain falls in Egypt. Egyptians are a mixture of many people including the Copts, who trace their origins to the pharaoh's time. Others came from Turkey, from ancient Rome, and from Arabia. Like China, Egypt was invaded by many foreigners during its history. Sometimes invaders were absorbed into the Egyptian culture, but not always. Arabs conquered Egypt in 639 AD the time of the Tang dynasty in China. They brought Islam and the Arabic language to Egypt, which have remained. Today, 90% of the Egyptians are practicing Muslims. Arabic is the official language. This is the Nile River, the lifeblood of Egypt. It flows through the capital city Cairo and north into the Mediterranean Sea. At 6,600 kilometers, it's the longest river in the world. Most of the population live in the fertile valley of the Nile. Its waters irrigate the land along its banks. The rest of the country is desert. The annual flooding of the Nile today, as in ancient times, renews the land's fertility and assures successful agriculture. The ancients built a great civilization on these banks. Today, millions from around the world come to see its wonders. Tourism is one of Egypt's most important industries. 
Egypt is expecting more than 1.5 million tourists this year. Vacationers who will be spending close to 1.2 billion US dollars shopping, bargaining, and feasting. A tour up the Nile in a riverboat is for tourists and natives alike. Up river, 500 kilometers from Cairo, the incomparable temples of Luxor and Karnak. The incredible Karnak temple, dating back 4,000 years, is not only a superior example of ancient architecture, but a symbol of the might and power of the pharaohs, who built this temple to honor their gods. It is not only the largest temple in Egypt, but in the world. Its area covers 50,000 square feet and contains more than 5,000 statues. These columns, 21 meters tall, are in the largest columned hall ever built by man. They testify to the genius of the ancient Egyptian architects. The pharaoh's power is demonstrated fully in the Valley of the Kings, in the opulence of the tombs they built as their burial ground. in ancient China. As soon as a king or emperor took the throne, he began the building of his tomb. The climate here is very dry and hot, a terrible place to live, but what a great place to preserve things for eternity. These figures, the Colossi of Memnon, guarded a pharaoh's tomb. Nearby, this incredible site, the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. She was one of the few queens in Egyptian history. Her temple, uniquely designed, was built as a series of grand terraces extending up a cliff with rows of square granite columns blending in with the mountainside is empty now, but one is struck by this enormous grandeur. The most famous tomb of all is that of the 19-year-old King Tutankhamun. When his tomb was discovered in 1922, it had an instantaneous and shattering effect around the world. For the first time, archaeologists found a tomb that had not been pillaged by tomb robbers. This is the mummy of King Tut, preserved for more than 3,200 years. The golden mask that covered the face of his mummy showed us exactly what he looked like. Countless treasures. If such treasures could be found in a tomb of a minor king who died at 19, imagine the unbelievable treasures one would expect to find in the tombs of major pharaohs. Still the most famous of all, the pyramids. These fabulous pyramids at Giza, a few miles from Cairo, are one of the seven wonders of the world. They are the tombs of the great kings or pharaohs, and they are over 5,000 years old. The construction of these colossal monuments in the middle of the desert was a technological feat that still staggers the imagination. 
The biggest of the three, the Great Pyramid of Cheops, is 150 meters high, and it's estimated to contain two million stones, each weighing over two tons. The Great Sphinx, the body of a lion with a human head, is the guardian of the tomb. Carved from a single rock, the Sphinx is 57 meters long and 20 meters in height. Despite the rapid growth of tourism and other industries, agriculture is Egypt's main source of income. Egyptian cotton is famous around the world and is Egypt's most important cash crop. Egypt is striving to modernize its agriculture, but the past hangs heavy on its present. Traditional methods still prevail. It carries the burden of its history perhaps more than most countries. Like many countries that are long on tradition and short on modernization, Egypt has a wide range of social classes. There are many contrasts. Water may still be carried in the traditional way, but there is a television in every village. With economic development, many rural people leave the land and cities become overcrowded. In the cities, there is air pollution, traffic congestion, poor housing conditions, as in similar situations the world over. In the desert, the Bedouin still leads a nomadic life, and the camel is still indigenous to the soil. But there is also wealth and affluence in Egypt. Weddings are happy occasions the world over. Egyptian weddings are no exception. Egypt, land of contrasts, magical land, is past impinging on its present. Egypt's 5,000 years of history tells the story of a remarkable civilization, of a people rich in talent and imagination. It was in Egypt that technology was born in the weaving of cloth, in the invention of paper, in the use of copper tools, in the invention of the water wheel. Like the phoenix, the miraculous Egyptian bird, Egypt civilization has been reborn from its ruins not once, but several times. Now in the 20th century, one can feel its pain and struggle to modernize, but one can also feel its sense of eternity. what Egypt means? One of the meanings of the word Egypt is the gift of the Nile, because without the Nile, there is simply no Egypt. Well, that's our show for today. I'm Yusai Khan for One World.